Hello everyone, you're watching Physio Classroom channel and in today's video, we are going to discuss about the importance of prescribing the right shoulder support at the right time to prevent hemiplegic shoulder pain and shoulder subluxation. Hemiplegic shoulder pain is one of the commonest complications that is seen in post-stroke patients and its occurrence ranges between 17 to 64 percent within the first three weeks from the onset of hemiplegia. So let's first quickly discuss what actually happens in a hemiplegic shoulder that makes it more susceptible for shoulder subluxation and pain. Now during the flaccid phase, the glenohumeral integrity is significantly compromised. The muscles that were responsible to provide the shoulder support and counteract the inferior pull of the gravity are not functioning properly. This results in the inferior and anterior migration of the humeral head which we can acknowledge by the presence of the sulcus sign. Also as a result there is abnormal stretching in the periarticular structures which undergo the ischemic changes resulting in the pain and inflammation. Now a physiotherapist can very easily prevent both these complications by prescribing the right shoulder support at the right time. Now when I say right shoulder support, this means that there are variety of shoulder supports that are available and that can be prescribed to a hemiplegic patient. But a shoulder support should be such that it is cosmetically sound and at the same time it makes the hemiplegic upper limb available for the exercise session. Now when I say a right shoulder support, this means that the shoulder support should successfully counteract the inferior pull of the gravity and can maintain the glenohumeral integrity during the performance of the upper limb exercises. Also the shoulder support should be such that, that it should not facilitate the development of flexor sparsity in the hemiplegic upper limb. Like many times we see hemiplegic patients wearing a shoulder pouch. Now the hemiplegic shoulder pouch is also prescribed to prevent shoulder subluxation and shoulder pain. But the major disadvantage is the posture in which the hemiplegic upper limb is kept in such type of supports. So one can easily appreciate remaining in this position for prolonged period in a shoulder pouch will facilitate the development of the flexor sparsity in the biceps muscle and the adductor sparsity in the pectoralis major and then it will become very difficult for the physiotherapist to regain the shoulder range of motion. Therefore an ideal shoulder support should have the following four main qualities. Number one, it should provide adequate support to the glenohumeral joint. Number two, it should be cosmetically sound and can be worn under the clothes so that it is not visible from outside. Number three, the support should provide opportunity to the patient to perform exercises even while it has been worn. And finally, it should be easy to wear and remove. So now let's demonstrate one such shoulder support that can be prescribed to a hemiplegic patient from day one to prevent shoulder subluxation and shoulder pain. So here the support that I am having has two parts. One is the thoracic strap and the other one is the shoulder cuff. This shoulder cuff part as you can see has two ends. The lower end wraps around the patient's hemiplegic arm and the upper end goes above the shoulder joint in this manner. Now both the ends of the first part are anchored using this thoracic strap. So this goes around from the back and it comes into the front and then this is anchored in this manner. Now after this the therapist holds the patient's hemiplegic arm and then supports under the elbow and then pushes the elbow in the superior direction so as to approximate the humeral head towards the glenoid fossa and then grabs this final strap and pulls it in the superior direction and anchors it above the shoulder joint. So this is the main strap of this shoulder support that is actually going to counteract the inferior pull of the gravity. Now the most important advantage of wearing this is 
that it can be worn under the t-shirt or shirt and the patient can be made to perform range of motion exercises and weight bearing exercises and other functional activities even while the cuff or the support has been worn by the patient. So I sincerely hope that the information shared by me in this video is going to be helpful, especially for the physiotherapy students and young practitioners. Do keep motivating us with your comments and feedback. Till then, keep learning, keep sharing and stay connected.